In Australia, we have four species of partilos, and today we want to look at the striated partilo. And here it is with the white line or the striation at the edge of the wing. The fronds on the forehead is split in the midline with black above the bill and then to either side in front of the eye there are two yellow patches to the fronds. And of course the white eyebrow or supercilium. Younger birds lack the black on the cap and the intensity of colour. Here an immature bird with pale olive grey about the head and the absence of black on the cap. The name striated partilo comes from the white line or striation seen in the primary feathers on the bottom edge of the wing. And at the beginning of that white line there is a little dot, you can just see it. In the Tasmanian striated partilo this coloured dot is yellow and this bird may be seen up and down the east coast of Australia in winter for it migrates. Partilos that breed on the mainland have a red dot. The striated partilo is the least colourful of all the partilos in Australia. And with the striated partilo, the coloration can vary enormously with both age and location. And we have five subspecies listed. The determining subspecies features are firstly the colour of the dot, whether it is red or yellow. Then the thickness is in the white line or the striated line. The absence or presence of white lines going through a black cap. The absence or presence of markings behind the eye. And finally, the most subjective of all, the colour of the rump and the length of the tail. And apart from the subspecies on Melville Island I will show you the other four. But the geographic limits of these birds is very poorly defined and there is enormous overlap. For me there are three main groups. Firstly the Tasmanian bird with the yellow dot, the northern black capped melanocephalus birds and the third group are those with the strong facial markings behind the eye. And at the end of the video I will show you some of the variations within the subspecies. The nominate subspecies from Tasmania has the thinnest of white lines below the wing and of course the yellow dot. Sometimes within a flock of birds the thickness of the white line can vary. This happens in particular between ornatus and substriatus making it difficult to use the white line as a separating point. And I will demonstrate this at the end of the video. As this bird goes down to drink, the buff rump can be seen present in all the striated partilo, with the exception of the Kimberley birds. See that little red dot at the beginning of the white striation on the primary wing feathers. The striated partilo has a black cap and a pale belly. The belly has a little bit of yellow tinge to it as does the chest. The back is a fawn grey with a touch of olive. Now in Victoria some more striated partilos. The white line is a little thinner than what we saw in the substriatus. The colours are more intense but this can vary with location. The dot is red and they are breeding in tunnels. A comparison with the nominate species and Ornatus. Ornatus has a slightly thicker white line. Notice the difference in the dot colour. Striated partilos, like other partilos, are group orientated birds. And here you can see three on a stick, but you can hear more calling from within the leaves of the adjacent gum tree. Partilos, having a good clear voice, but yet being very small, are more often heard than seen. The most common thing that they eat is the lerp found on the gum leaf. Sometimes on a still morning you can hear the peck peck as the partilos take these sugar coated psyllids off the leaf. So finding partilos in trees where there are lots of gum leaves is difficult as they are only a little bit bigger than the average gum leaf. So we need to listen. And here is the call of a substriatus striated partilo. And notice that it has two syllables. And as you can see, apart from psyllids, these birds also like larval forms of insects. 
Going further north to the top end of the Northern Territory, the striated padalo there has a slightly different call. Just listen. Now we have three syllables. Moving to further northern latitudes in Australia, there are several changes that take place with the striated pardalo. Firstly, the head loses its stripes and becomes black. Secondly, as noticed, the calls often become more three-syllable calls than two-syllable. And lastly, nesting. Far more burrowing is done in the northern latitudes, whereas in southern latitudes there is a predominance for tree-hollow nesting. Here in the Kimberley, this striated padalo is gleaning, and the cap is now black, without white lines, often called the black-capped padalo. They are still striated padalos, having the white line through the lower wing, and being non-Tasmanian or continental birds, they have the red dot at the beginning of the white line. In the tropics, the padalos there really do not migrate much, they are more sedentary. The Tasmanian bird is the most migratory of all, for it migrates from Tasmania right up to the Queensland border. The northern birds, with the absence of streaking through the black cap, don't have much in the way of markings around the face, more pale and yellow with a black line behind the eye. These are called Melanocephalus. Now the species in the Kimberley is called Europegalus, so it's in the same group as the black capped striated pardalos. From the name Europegalus, you can imagine that there's something different about the rump of this bird, and indeed it is yellow. Let's look in detail at a Europegalus as it flies into a nest. A beautiful golden yellow rump, and the red dot you can see that it's not just on one feather but multiple, and it carries insect food into the nest, then flying out with a faecal pellet. Pardalos dig these burrows, and at the end of the burrow the nest is located. And here this Melanocephalus pardalo in Queensland is carrying nesting material to the burrow. Notice the rump of the Melanocephalus is more fawn than yellow. Another feature one can notice moving further to northern latitudes is the changing colour of the fronds. It goes more from yellow to an orange colour. However, I have noticed this orange colour in some of the southern latitude birds as well as previously shown in the Ornatus birds from Victoria. Now let's go back into New South Wales and look at some of the variations within the substriatus range. And here again you can see this bird with a fairly thick white line, the cap doesn't have any black and the markings are very soft. This is an immature bird now with an adult on the left hand side. An adult substriatus in New South Wales. Red dot, and you may think the white line is fine, but it's a little bit thicker than what one would find in the nominate Tasmanian bird. A juvenile substriatus with minimal amount of colour and no black on the cap. Coincidental spotted pardalo on the left. In the juvenile substriatus, the white band is still significantly thick. I will insert some still shots so you can get some idea of the variations that can be seen in striated pardalos. Though I have given a subspecies name, just remember that there is enormous overlap between these. For instance, Look at the immature birds here. Some have a thick white line and others a very thin white line. Yet all the adults in this area I would have said were substriatus. But look at this, a very thin white line, suggestive of an ornatus. In this last shot, here is a bird that has a black cap, a melanocephalus, photographed in northern Queensland. 
Yet, there are prominent facial markings, suggesting breeding between a Melanocephalus and one of the southern birds. This Pardalo has taken a begging stance, and you will often see this. It seems to be a reflex, not so much when they catch food, but when another bird catches food. So here is our final clip with the Melanocephalus from Western Queensland without the facial markings. On behalf of Plims of Oz, thank you for watching this video on the striated Pardalo of Australia. If you would like to subscribe, this will help us to bring you more videos on Australian birds in the wild.